Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I hope that everybody is doing well. This is just gonna be one of those like sit down and talk videos. I'm waiting in my car right now for my youngest to come out of preschool. So bear with me if my thoughts are a little bit all over, but I just thought it would be fun to sit down where I talk about is healthcare customer service. And um, yes, before we get into this, yes, my nose is peeling. I was out in the sun a little too long. And also, if you're wondering, yes, I am missing some of my eyebrow. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I went to the dermatologist. They cut something off there, and some of my eyebrow hair went with it. It'll grow back, I really hope. Not the point of the video, I just wanted to point out, yes, my nose, I know it's peeling. Yes, I'm aware my eyebrow has like, got a piece missing out of it. So anyway, is healthcare, working in healthcare, is that customer service. I'm just going to share some opinions, um, some of my own personal opinions on the matter, and then I would love to hear what you guys think too. So working now in a private practice, more than ever, I feel like healthcare is treated like a customer service. And so what I mean by that, and this happens all the time, is patients will come in, they'll tell me their diagnosis that they've diagnosed themselves with, and they'll tell me the treatment that they want or they'll tell me what they've diagnosed themselves with and they'll tell me the test and the treatment that they want. You know, they'll come in, I just need a chest x-ray, it's just bronchitis again, and a Z-pack is what I need. You know, just something along those lines. And they just come in, this happens all the time. I'll walk into my patient's room, they'll tell me their own diagnosis, they'll tell me the treatment that they want. And so usually the way that I interact and respond to that is I'll just say, okay, well, what symptoms are you having? So I worked in customer service for years before um, working in healthcare, and I worked at different retail shops, and I worked at a restaurant, and it was always, customers always right, which anyone that works in customer service, like, ugh, like, ooh, this, I hate the phrase. You had to try and appease the customer because they were the business. They were the money that was coming in, and your job is to keep the business coming in so CEOs and big business people are making all the revenue. They don't want their sales to go down, and so you have to pl practice customer is always right and please your customers. Healthcare seems very similar, and so what I mean by that is oftentimes a patient will request something like a Z pack, and a lot of times people will practice charting that, and myself included, I've talked about this before, but this is something that I just see in practice all the time. You know, where patients are requesting antibiotics, you don't think it's bacterial, but they're really heavily demanding antibiotics. And so you give in and you give them the antibiotic, even though you don't think it's indicated. And then maybe you chart in their chart that, you know, they demanded it and so you did it. So that's, you know, like customer service, like patients always, right? But is the patient always right? Well, obviously not. If the patient was always right, then everybody would work, be able to work in healthcare. Um, but no, people go to school for a long time. I have my master's, that's six years worth of school that I've done in nursing. Doctors, they do four years of residency plus four years of medical school plus their fellowship, whatever. I mean, they go to school for a very long time to develop their expertise. But I feel like we are encouraged as healthcare providers to act like they're always right and please them. And so you have to kind of play customer service and healthcare. So in my mind, I try and think of, well, what if it were like, you know, as a, from a parent's perspective, right? I'm a parent. My children are not always right. Not, not that I am either. And not to say that medicine is always right either, obviously. But the job of a parent is to try and do what's always right for your child, even if they don't like it. And even if it's uncomfortable for them, um, but you are you should have in mind that you're trying to do whatever is best for your child, even if it's what they don't want, even if they're not happy with the choices and the rules that you make. And so I hate to say like healthcare is similar, but healthcare is similar. And not to say that I am perfect at this. This is just like, these are just thoughts that I had, have had. You know, even if our patients aren't happy with the answers that we give them or the treatment that is is or is not appropriate, it should be irrelevant because really we're trying to do what's best for our patient. Whether or not it's antibiotics or not, whether or not it's ordering a chest x-ray or not, if there's no reason to order a chest x-ray based on science and evidence, then we shouldn't order it even if it's just for the peace of the mind of the patient. Or should we? I don't know. That's a great question. Is peace of mind more important than exposing them to however much radiation and 
unnecessary procedures or tests is peace of mind something to take into account see this has no purpose this talk right now but this these are the questions that i ask myself because i have found myself in situations where i've done and it sounds so silly and small but where i you know prescribed a z-pack simply to please my patient i mean i get that this is not like a huge breaking of the moral compass i mean there's much worse things i could do Healthcare really is like customer service people come in they tell me their order and i'm expected to follow through in some regard you know it's all about those customer reviews those five star reviews on yelp or whatever it is and don't get me wrong i have said no I have said no multiple times. And I'll tell you a story of just recently, and this is kind of what triggered this little sit down and chat with you guys. I had this patient, she was close to my age, a little bit older, came in, which she had said for bronchitis, that she called her primary care for over the phone and he sent her a Z-Pack. And she told me this is because she doesn't need to see her doctor, she knows her body better than her doctor knows her body. And so she can just call him up and tell him what's going on and what her diagnosis is and request the appropriate treatment. And so she diagnosed herself with bronchitis like five days before I had seen her because she was on her last day of her z -pack. When I saw her, she was on day five and she couldn't believe that she wasn't getting better. And so now she was asking for Leviquin. And what she told me was that whenever the z -pack doesn't do the job, it's Leviquin that she needs. I mean, so yeah, I'm sure some people are hearing this and like, oh, just kind of cringing, right? First of all, well, it probably didn't work because what you have is probably viral and antibiotics don't treat viruses. And she goes, no, 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 I get the bacterial bronchitis. And when it doesn't work with z -Pak, I need Leviquin. So I talked to her about Leviquin and how she'd be hard pressed to see that I ever prescribe uh, Leviquin from the urgent care setting. For obvious reasons, I'm not even going to all the details here on this because that's not what it's about, but that's a heavy, hard-hitting antibiotic. And if someone's needing Leviquin, then they need a higher level of care. You don't, I mean, who would prescribe that from the urgent care setting? Anyway, she went on to tell me that she's done this before or she's gone to other urgent cares and been prescribed Leviquin and she couldn't believe, you know, that I was just gonna send her home without giving the medication that she requested. And this is a really easy example and a really easy one, I guess, to deny. It's those z packs that get tricky, right? And I've fallen into, sometimes I just give into that. Not always, but I have definitely given into it. This one was an easy no, to be completely honest with you. It was just kind of interesting how extreme that can go when someone thinks that they can just come into an urgent care, say that they have bronchitis that was resistant to z pack so now they need Leviquin. Mind you, stable vitals. Her heart and lungs sounded amazing. No medical history. She wasn't even really symptomatic anymore at the time. And so she was also really requesting a chest x-ray. And so this is kind of an extension of that. I ended up ch doing the chest x-ray for the peace of mind and to tell her like, I don't see any focal consolidation on exam. But did she need a chest x-ray by all criteria that, you no, she definitely did not. I did give in to that. I didn't give her the Leviquin. I, so I'd say it's a win-win. But yeah, she had no focal consolidations on exam or on chest x-ray. The lungs were clear in all fields, stable vitals, almost asymptomatic. And it was just so like off the wall, I felt like request that I was waiting for like Ashton Kutcher to jump out and say I was being punked. Like this girl came in with a stuffy nose demanding Leviquin. Anyway, she didn't leave with Leviquin. I offered her Flonase and Zyrtec. She was not happy about that. I mean, it's hard. Healthcare is not customer service, but patients expect it to be like customer service. And so it's real tricky. So I wanna know what you guys think about the question, is healthcare customer service? What do you guys think? How do you practice? How do you feel your employers or the business that you work for? What do they want of you and how you practice medicine? Do you? stick to your guns and only do things that medicine and science says is what to do or do you give in to your patient's request even when you think it doesn't make sense she said to me honey okay first of all i'm like 
I don't like being patronized. I am a grown woman with a mortgage. You know what I'm saying? I have a job. I got kids. I got bills to pay. But just so honey, just so you know, medicine doesn't always follow the book. And in my mind, I'm thinking, yes, I know that medicine does not always follow the book. But it follows the book more often than it doesn't follow the book. <laughs> so anyway, yes, let me know what you guys think. And until next time, I wish you guys nothing but the best. I'll talk to you soon.